Moses was an Egyptian. Sigmund Freud, Moses and Monotheism. Hello and welcome back. We missed you. In chapter 23, Don Quixote relates what he saw in the cave of Montesinos. At 12 or 14 yards of depth in this dungeon, he found the ledge of an opening. Note that Don Quixote has changed to a slightly longer measurement than the spans used by the narrator. Cervantes plays with us, but this also indicates a problem. If Don Quixote only descended about 20 meters, this leaves about 140 meters of rope unaccounted for. Did Don Quixote enter the opening and fall asleep? Or did he tumble off the ledge and end up further inside the cave? Are there other explanations? Just like our origins, perhaps our umbilical cord is always a mystery. Now Don Quixote creates a paradox. He says he fell asleep, but that everything he subsequently saw was real. After he awakes in a locus amenus, he repeatedly checks to make sure he is not dreaming. I felt my head and chest to make sure that I was the man who was there and not some hollow and conjured phantom. But my sense of touch, my feelings, and the ordered discourse I held with myself all certified for me that I was then and there he who is here and now. Is this proof enough? At this point, Don Quixote sees another of those ambivalent structures associated with Dulcinea, a royal and sumptuous palace, palacio, or fortress, Alcázar. He then meets Montesinos, an old man with a flowing white beard dressed like a scholar. Montesinos tells Don Quixote how all the inhabitants of the cave arrived there. They have all been enchanted by the evil wizard Merlin, that French wizard whom they say was the son of the devil. I can believe it. Once again, Don Quixote's chivalric fantasy centers on the Battle of Roncesvalles. Here, Cervantes assembles Montesinos' story from old French epic poems and from late medieval Spanish ballads. As he lay dying after the battle, Montesinos' cousin Duandarte, whose name was originally that of Roland's sword, made him promise to remove his heart with a dagger and take it to his beloved Belerma. But now, under Merlin's spell in the cave, Montesinos and Belerma mourn Durandarte's perpetual state of suspended animation. The knight lies in the middle of a crystal palace and repeatedly begs his cousin to take his heart to his beloved. Montesinos takes Don Quixote to see Durandarte, who appears to be unaware of anyone's presence. Did you know Life is a Dream by Pedro Calderón de la Barca also centers on a conflict between reality and dreams. The same topic is found in modern films like Inception and The Matrix. The humor of this chapter stems from the burlesque contrasts between the melodramatic chivalric events that are described with high rhetoric and absurdly mundane details that are described with a modern register. For example, according to Don Quixote, Montesinos is unarmed but carries a huge rosary. In his hand, a rosary with beads larger than medium-sized walnuts, and similarly with decade beads as large as medium-sized ostrich eggs. Sancho interjects that the dagger must be made by Ramon de Oces, the civilian. But Don Quixote objects that there are too many years between the present of Ramon de Oces and the early medieval battle of Roncesvalles. Another example, when Montesinos tries to tell Durandarte that he long ago left for France with his heart, he specifies that he cleaned it with a particularly modern piece of cloth. I wiped it with a lace handkerchief. He even salted it to preserve it. Leaving Roncesvalles at the first place that I stopped, I sprinkled some salt on your heart so that it would not smell bad and would arrive, if not fresh, at least as good as cured meat. Cervantes' creative generic experimentation eventually folds chivalric fantasy into a modern parody of classical Ovidian metamorphosis. Notice also the extreme mise en abime of all of this. Beyond Cervantes, the Christian narrator, the translator, and Cidiamete, here Don Quixote narrates a vision in which Montesinos narrates 
Durandarte's story. Montesinos explains that among Durandarte's mourners in the cave were once his squire Guadiana, along with Doña Ruidera, with her daughters and nieces. But Merlin transformed them into the lakes of Ruidera and the Guadiana River. Which two literary genres does Cervantes combine in the Cave of Montesinos episode? A. Detective fiction and Marian hagiography. B. Science fiction and the folktale. C. Chivalric novel and Ovidian metamorphosis. Correct answer, C. Chivalric novel and Ovidian metamorphosis. Finally, when Montesinos tells Durandarte that the great hero Don Quixote has arrived to disenchant them, his cousin sighs and responds with an hilariously prosaic term used by card players. And if it cannot be so, dear cousin, then I say, shut up and shuffle. Another comical aspect here involves Freudian projections in Don Quixote's dream. Montesinos' rosary recalls Don Quixote's in the Sierra Morena. Durandarte's hand is similar to Don Quixote's in part one when he offered it to Maritornes. The fact that Durandarte is Montesino's cousin signals the cousin who listens with Sancho. Similarly, a general anxiety over Turks is visible in the clothes worn by Belerma and her retinue, all dressed in mourning with white turbans on their heads in the Turkish fashion. Don Quixote describes Belerma as somewhat ugly, recalling the realistic Dulcinea that shocked him in Don Quixote Part 2, Chapter 10. Her eyebrows were one, and she was rather snub-nosed, and her teeth showed diastemas and were not well positioned. Another comical contrast has Freudian implications for the cave as a birth canal. Montesinos tells Don Quixote that Palerma's decayed condition is not due to her menstrual cycle, which she has not had for many years, but rather her constant mourning for Durandarte. That's all for now. Don't even think about missing our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.